in the last class we have seen some yielding criteria which determines if i have given a stress state i can figure it out whether material can yield or not if i know yield stress of a material using an inertial tensile test here we will be looking at what are atomistic mechanisms of yielding what exactly happens when material undergoes a plastic deformation that is what we are going to inquire together so we have seen this engineering stress strain curve and we know that above yield stress material starts plastically deforming if you see an elastic region you know that during elastic deformation of crystalline materials the bonds get stretched up when i increase a strain or stress on material and when i release this stress the bonds will come back or springs back to their original position so that is what we have seen during an elastic deformation of crystalline materials there is certain volume change involved when bonds are getting stretched up and when i release the stress or load the bonds get relaxed or come back to their original position and material regains its original shape now the question is what happens during plastic deformation so that's the question so you have material over here which is shown here and you know that plastic deformation involves a shape change a permanent shape change so you have plastic deformation let's say i have material like this and i subject it to a plastic deformation so there can be three scenarios by which a material shape change can occur let me put down those three scenarios here first scenario you get a shape change in this fashion in second scenario you get a shape change like this and in third scenario i get shape change where the atoms are in this fashion distributed in this fashion so out of this three scenario which is which accommodates the shape change so let's look at this three scenarios in terms of a crystal structure so you have a crystal structure here in the first scenario you have this crystal structure maintained or that it retains a crystal structure even after a plastic deformation in second scenario the crystal structure has changed here it was square now it has become a rhombus in the third scenario there is no crystal structure or the bonds get broken and you have an amorphous kind of a structure so the shape change can be accommodated by using these three situations where in the first situation you retain the crystal structure second situation you have a change in crystal structure and third case the material become amorphous so what is that happening during plastic deformation so this was a question 100 years before when people were studying plastic deformation how to figure it out what what is exactly happening during a plastic deformation is there a change in a crystal structure people use x rays to find out a crystal structure so you so using a careful x ray diffraction studies people have figured it out what exactly can be a scenario during a plastic deformation so we have a, i have shown you earlier a case of a nickel where you can see that the peak positions with respect to a plastic strain strain so there is an increase in the plastic strain but you can see that the peak positions of nickel remains same or relative positions of this peaks of nickel are not changing so there is no change in the relative theta positions and what does that indicate if you apply a bragg's law that clearly indicates that there is no change in crystal structure so out of three scenarios what we have during plastic deformation is that there is no change in crystal structure so this is a great or profound insight what is we get during a plastic deformation so you have a shape change occurring but the crystal structure remains the same 
and that is what is being guaranteed using an X-ray diffraction studies. So you have a scenario where plastic deformation occurs, includes a shape change, but no crystal structure change. Another observations people have seen are observation of slip lines. So you have slip lines which I have shown over here. This is a micrograph where on the surface you can see some lines and these are called as slip lines. So this surface was initially polished like a mirror and when it was subjected to a deformation and after deformation the surface was again observed and these lines were seen on the surface and these lines are called as slip lines. Let me explain that to you. So let's say I have a, my material like this and I polish surface I have mentioned or marked over here. So this is a polished surface and let us put that crystal for shear stress. So there this is a relative motion which will occur between the, some of the atoms and there will be a protrusion which is, comes out on the surface and this is called as a step which is called as a surface step and this is nothing but a sleep line. So these are the sleep lines if you observe from the microscope you can see this protrusion which comes out as a step and these sleep lines are forming during the deformation or when I subject my material to a shear stresses. If you see, uh, this is a schematic which I have shown over here, you can see some sleep lines which are coming onto the surface and these are grain boundaries. So these sleep lines and the x-ray studies clearly indicates that there is a movement of atoms or layers which accommodate the shape change but no crystal structure change. These are the two important observations. Now we know that the shape change is, is without any crystal change. So there are two mechanisms which can be thought of. One is a sleep and another is twinning. I have shown the schematics of sleep and twinning here where you can see that the atoms are sleeping over each other or gliding over each other. I am using these terms you will see the meanings of this term as we go along. So the practical observations said that the atoms will sleep along a particular plane and along a particular direction. Or there is a, another mechanism called twinning, we will be dealing it with you later. So we will deal sleep now and twinning later in this course. So, when this meticulous or careful experiments were done, how the material is deforming? So, come out with mechanisms like sleep, which takes on a certain crystallographic planes and along crystallographic directions. So, this was found using some meticulous and careful experiments. And these crystallographic planes on which sleep occurs are called as sleep planes. And crystallographic direction along which sleep takes place are called sleep directions and combination of these two sleep planes and sleep direction is called as a sleep system. So another experimental results which which will two important results are sleep planes are usually close packed planes and sleep directions are usually close packed directions. So here we are introducing a term sleep by which a shape change occur, but there is no crystal change occur. Okay. So this is an important mechanism, uh, important plastic deformation mechanism. Here you can see that when I'm stretching the material, there is a sleeping or uh, the shape change is getting accommodated by having a sleep of atomic layers over another atomic layers and that occurs on certain crystallographic planes and along a certain crystallographic direction and those planes are called as sleep planes 
and direction along which occurs is called as a sleep direction. So we are getting introduced to terminologies like sleep planes and sleep directions and the sleep system when I say combination of these two sleep planes and sleep direction I call it as a sleep system and here are these two observations which I am again reiterating is that sleep planes are usually closed path planes and sleep direction are usually closed path direction. Now let's see the sleep in terms of a crystal nature. Let's look at abscess structure. Might have studied in your physical metallurgy class. So this is an abscess structure and this is a closed plant plane. So you would have studied the atomic density on 111 type planes is maximum as compared to other types of plane like 100 or 110 in case of abscess crystal structure. So this is one of the 111 plane that is 111 plane which I have marked over here and there are four kinds of 111 plane. So here you have eight octahedral planes which I have shown here. If you consider eight such cubes or abscess structure joined together you can find that you can see that there can there can be eight kind of 111 plane. But out of these eight planes four only will be representing a distinct planes. What I mean is that so if I consider let me write it down so if I consider this plane this plane this will be crystallographically similar to this plane so I can clearly say that or this plane maybe I let me change another color so if I see this plane this will be crystallographically similar to this plane so out of this eight planes only four are distinct so you have four one 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 plane and these are four closed packed one 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 planes and you have closed pack direction so you know in abscc what are closed pack direction so if i consider this one 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 plane so there will be three closed pack direction one is like bar one one zero and other two is like zero bar one one and 1 0 bar 1. So I can write the family here as 1 bar 1 0. So I have 3 close pack directions and 3 close pack, uh, 4 sorry, 4 close pack planes. So when I want to say a slip system in case of FCC, so number of slip system will be 4 into 3 which turns out to be 12 and I write it in this fashion where I write a slip plane which are 111 type and sleep direction which are 1 bar 1 0. So these are the sleep systems in case of abscess crystal structure. Now let's look at for a PCC crystal structure. So this is a PCC crystal structure which I have mentioned. So in this you have closed pack plane that is 110 type which I have marked over here. So this is 110 type plane or close pack plane and you have close pack direction are along body diagonal. So these are the two close pack direction which are in this plane that is bar 1 1 1 and 1 bar 1 1. So I have close pack planes and close pack directions. So in all in BCC there are 6 close pack planes and you have two close pack direction which are lying in this plane. Important point here is that this close pack directions when I'm talking about, I'm talking about the close pack directions which are lying in that plane. So in case of FCC also, in case of PCC also, here these are two close pack directions which are in this plane that is 110. That is very important when we define a slip system. So, how many slip systems will be there in case of PCC? So in case of PCC, you will have 6 into 2 that is 12. So if you see this 110 type of plane, you can see that this is not a closed pack plane. It is not truly closed pack plane. There can be another planes which 
which are there on which sleep occurs in the case of pcc so those planes are kind of 2111 and 321 type planes so they they will have 12 slip system and these 3 to 1 will contribute to 24 slip system but most of the pcc materials will show these kind of slip systems that is 110 bar 111 type of slip system here an important thing is that in case of pcc the closed pack direction is 111 and that remains same and only the slip planes are varying here so here you have 110 type plane you have 211 and you have 3 to 1 this you would have studied in in your physical metallurgy class but for our course we want to know what are the slip system in the case what are the slip planes and what are the slip directions in case of fcc and vcc now let's look at for hcp in case of hcp you can see that this is a plane which is a basal plane that is 0001 plane which is a closed plat plane and these directions that is of 1 1 bar to 0 type directions these are a closed plat directions so these are this one plane and these are kind of a three directions so the slip system will be in case of hcp will be three there are other slip planes also in case of hcp and that will be will be looking at now in this table so here in case of fcc we have a closed slip plane as 111 type and slip direction is 110 type and the number of slip system will be 12 in case of bcc you can see that the slip direction remains same that is 111 but the some of the materials which have bcc structure show different slip planes like 110 in case of alpha iron tungsten and molybdenum in case uh, alpha iron shows and tungsten also shows at certain conditions of temperature and strain rates that slip planes to be 211 and in some some other conditions they show it as 321 in case of hcp you can see that the closed plat plane is 0001 and closed plat direction is 11 bar to 0 and it remains same this direction remains same closed pack direction in case of titanium magnesium and zirconium the closed pack plane or the slip plane will be 10 bar 10 this is kind of this is kind of a prismatic plane let me write it down this kind of a prismatic plane and this is pyramidal plane. so you have different kind of slip systems in case of pcc and hcp the important point here is slip occurs on a closed pack plane and along closed pack directions we will be looking at what are the stresses required to have the slip to occur in the next part